If you want to find the net worth of a person, it's simple. You take the total assets minus the total liabilities. If everything you own is your house, it's worth $1.4 million and you have a $1 million mortgage, your net worth would be 400,000 US dollars. It's as simple as that. And even for companies, for businesses, we have the net worth, but we call it the book value. And just like with a person, you would want the book value, the net worth of the business to be positive. That is the assets will be bigger than the liabilities. Otherwise, over the long term, this company would go bankrupt. Just like if your mortgage is bigger than the value of your house, eventually, if you don't have the cash to pay for it, you will go bankrupt. But here's a company with its liabilities bigger than its assets. This company has a negative book value. And of course, that is booking holdings. And I will tell you that this is the beauty of booking holdings. That the fact that their liabilities are increasing so rapidly is the beauty of this company. That to understand why I like the liabilities of booking holdings so much, we have to talk about float, about insurance float. We know that one of the main reasons why Warren Buffett is so rich today is because of insurance flow. That is the success of Berkshire Hathaway. What exactly is flow? If you look at the balance sheet, it is a liability. It's the same like bank deposits. If you deposit money into the bank, the bank has to pay you an interest on that. It is a liability for the bank. Maybe for you it is an asset, but for the bank it is a liability. But the bank, they use that liability to make money by loaning to other people and banks make money on spread. So they pay you 2% on your deposit, but then they are going to loan at 4%. So they make a 2% profit on every dollar. For banks, we call it deposits. For insurance, we call it float. So you pay the insurance company, and then you expect that if something bad happens, let's say you meet with a car accident, the insurance company is going to pay you a certain amount. So you're giving your money to that insurance company. It is a liability for them because they owe you that money but they can invest that money. This is the secret of Berkshire Hathaway. But why they are the only one that was so successful at it is because of something else, which many people don't really talk about. Everyone talks about float, but they don't talk about the cost of float. The float itself is liability. It becomes an asset if the cost of float is low. That is, you're not spending that much money on the float. This is why most insurance companies, they don't invest in stocks, in businesses. They invest only in bonds because they know that they are losing money on the float. They are losing that much money, so they have to play it safe. Berkshire Hathaway, because they are not losing money on the float, the cost of float is low, they could invest in more volatile, securities in stocks and all insurance businesses are not the same the ones that Berkshire Hathaway entered into don't require really that they have to obtain a certain returns on investment for example with annuities with life insurance there needs to be a certain returns on investment you're investing other people's money and if you do that of course let's say you promise those people five percent and you are making four percent it's not good your abilities are going to grow bigger than your assets, what happened with Gamble Financial. But with the auto insurance, which is a short-term float, because usually people pay only for six months, and then we have long-term float, like with reinsurance. These are safer insurance businesses for Berkshire Hathaway. But insurance, just like banks, have limitations. And it's mostly because of regulations. These businesses have to be capitalized. The equity, the book value of an insurance business cannot be negative, otherwise, the regulators will come and tell them you have to cease operations. They need to maintain a certain amount of capital, especially banks. But this is not the case for booking holdings. That's why booking holdings, they can have a negative book value and nobody will come and tell them anything as long as the shareholders are happy. So what exactly is the flood of booking holdings? Let's talk about how booking holdings generate revenues and how these revenues are recorded on the financial statements. Let's say you're going to book a hotel for December. You pay $1,000 to booking holdings. The cash goes to booking holdings. But then when the company is going to report earnings, they are not going to book that revenue there. Because this is for December, it is only going to be recorded once you go and stay in the hotel, once the services are delivered. So the $1,000 it is a liability for the company because it is not recorded, but they hold the cash. 
and it is called deferred merchant revenues. Usually, booking holdings will keep a percentage from the booking. It's 15 to 20 percent, and the rest they are going to give to the hotel. So, if you pay the 1,000 dollars, of course, it has to be accounted for as a liabilities because eventually they will have to pay most of it to the hotel. And you will see on the balance sheet of booking holdings, there is this liability. It is called deferred merchant revenues. It varies from three to seven billion US dollars every year because in summer people are traveling more. So it is going to be bigger in summer compared to winter. This is the flood of booking holdings, three to seven billion US dollars every year. But what is the cost of flood? I don't have a formula. I don't know how to calculate it, but I can tell you it is very low because it is a capital light business. They don't own that many assets actually. I was in Amsterdam two weeks ago and I saw the headquarters of Booking.com, Booking Holdings. It is not a building they own, they lease it. They don't own any factories. There is nothing really capital intensive that they have to own. So it is a capital light business. We can say that the cost of float is very low and Booking Holdings can invest that float just like an insurance business would. And just like Berkshire Hathaway, they can make riskier investments. If the management of booking holdings was stupid, they would be investing in Bitcoin or even stocks, but they are not stupid. They know what to do with the cash. They have been paying dividends and buying back shares. So returning that excess cash, that liability to the shareholders of a company. It is good that they do both. Before it was only buybacks, now it's buyback and dividends. So they have more control. If the stock price gets expensive, they will pay more dividends. But if the stock price goes down, they will buy back more shares. So they can make use of both. This is the mistake that Apple did, focusing only on buybacks. And today, the stock price is expensive. They cannot buy back that many shares anymore. And the dividend is still small. If you think that I'm joking, that it cannot be that Booking Holdings is taking liability and returning it to shareholders. Let's just look at the earnings of Booking Holdings in the last five years. This includes, of course, the pandemic, the recession. You will see that the total net income of Booking Holdings was around 13 billion US dollars. You can find everything on the Super Investors Club. I talk about this with the full analysis of Booking Holdings, the valuation and everything else. So 13 billion dollars, that was the net income of Booking Holdings in the last five years. The free cash flow of the company is around 20 billion US dollars. And how much money was the company able to return to shareholders? And here I had to make an adjustment because they increased their debt. So how much money they were able to return to shareholders without accounting for this debt increase? It's around 20 billion dollars. So Booking Holdings is a company that doesn't really need to reinvest in the business. They can return all that extra cash, cash flow generated to shareholders. And that extra cash flow generated is the free cash flow minus the stock-based compensation, of course, and not the net income. So looking at the financial statements of booking holdings, it is not accurate. You have to look at the cash flow statement. Usually for banks and insurance companies, we don't really do that. We look at net income. But in the case of booking holdings, we can do it. Probably the question you have next is whether I would be buying more of booking holdings. Actually, I always want to buy this company. It is probably the best company I own right now. I used to say it was Apple. This is no longer the case. It is booking holdings. If I had to own only one, it would be this one. But unfortunately, at the correct price, I'm not buying anymore. Last time I bought shares was in early August when the market was crashing and I'm already up 24%. And I hope the stock price goes down so that I can buy more shares. There are many other reasons why I like this company. It's not the only one. We talk about it being a capital light business, which I want to have more in my portfolio right now. I will recommend you watch this video next to understand why. Have a nice day and goodbye.